Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Kidwell. I am one of the Education Abroad Advisors here at UA. Um, and today I will be moderating this session for semester at C. This session will be recorded, so keep that in mind if you do decide to share your video or turn on your mic to ask any questions. It will be recorded, but still feel comfortable in dropping any questions in the chat or even turning on your video and mic once we call for questions. Um, we'll start off with a short presentation, about 10 minutes, and then go into any questions you might have. Um, and I'll go ahead and let Brittany introduce herself. All right, awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany. Oh, oops, sorry. Um, Brittany, I'm with Semester at Z. I'm one of the regional directors here, and I work with the students um, that come from the University of Alabama. Um, I'm here to answer any kind of questions you may have um, about the program, any questions you may have um, about the application process, all the way through the deposit. Uh, I'll go ahead and I will drop my email address into the chat. So in case you don't get to answer your question or ask me a question today and it comes up later, you are more than welcome to reach out to me via email with any further questions that you may have. Um, but yeah, we go ahead and get started. So kind of a little program overview. Um, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we're, uh, it's called the Institute of Shipboard Education and semester C is something underneath that. Um, our academic partner is CARS University, so that means all of our coursework and courses come from there. Um, we visit around 10 to 12 different countries each semester, so we do a fall semester and a spring, and we spend around four to six days in each uh, location. Um, usually the larger locations will spend a little bit more, um, like China, India, uh, and then the rest will kind of be around the four to five days. We have over 73,000 alumni, and it's from about 1,700 institutions. Um, so pretty large, large organization. We've been around for, I want to say, over 55 years. So definitely a lot of experience. Um, and so kind of what you're looking at right now are going to be pictures of the ship. Um, so we have about, uh, we have nine decks, seven of them are passenger decks, uh, nine classrooms, two dining halls, two snack bars, a library, student union, um, theater, medical clinic, counseling center, fitness deck, spa, pool, sports deck. I mean, it's all really encompassing. We basically wanted to make sure that you have this campus and community on the ship while you're standing at each of the ports. So uh, instead of being at your home university, you're able to be on a ship and have all the amenities necessary. Um, our SAS community on the ship kind of makes up of around 560 students from 250 universities, about 60 faculty and staff members plus their families, uh, 10 to 12, uh, 20 lifelong learners, and then 200 international crew members. So the ship holds almost about a thousand people. So it's actually kind of more of a medium-sized cruise ship than most um, big name carnival large cruise ships. Uh, they're actually, it's kind of fun when you get to go to a port and you see them sitting next to it next to each other you're like oh mine's the baby ship <laughs> um but yeah so there's definitely some pictures here of kind of what the ship looks like um and we're going to kind of cruise over into some academics so for our academics we have around 70 to 75 courses offered each voyage and this covers across 20 to 25 disciplines um, about two-thirds are upper division and about one-third is lower division um, and all of the courses come from Colorado State University like I said before. Um, semester C works really really closely with the academic department at CSU in creating these courses uh, for our students. As you can see each student is required to take 12 credit courses, uh, credit hours up to four courses. If you did want to take an additional course you are allowed but you do need to get approval from your university. Um, and all students would be required to take a global studies course. So the global studies course is a three credit upper division course that goes into detail about all the countries you visit on your voyage. Uh, it's kind of really there to prepare you for um, each country you're going to. And then also afterwards, uh, you get to do like a post reflection, which is really great because you go to these countries with an expectation and what you think is going to happen. And then sometimes that doesn't really happen. And so it was really great to be able to get together after that port and get together these small groups and kind of really reflect on what you learned while you were there. Uh, as you can see, um, our classes meet on an A and B day. 
So this is really different compared to your traditional university where you're used to Monday through Friday. So on the ship, you're actually only going to be taking classes while you're at sea. So while you are sailing to each of the ports is when you're in class. So definitely a little bit different. So definitely don't think about your weekends as Saturday and Sunday. Your weekends are really going to be when you're in port, which is really awesome because you definitely get to take the chance to get off the ship and go explore that country. Now, the one time you will have class in port is uh, field classes. And these field classes are unique to your class. And it's basically when you, um, you're taking everything you learn in that class and then you get to do it in real life. So you're, you're in port with your teacher. Um, I think actually, sorry, I have a slide on that, my bad. <laughs> You, you're in your um, this court with your teacher for eight hours and you're learning what you learn in class and really doing hands-on experience. It's really fascinating to be able to kind of feel, touch, and do things that you've been learning. Um, and this is actually included in your program cost, so no additional fee for that. Uh, import experiences. So there's a couple different ways for you to do import experiences. and it's either, you know, um, field programs with semester at sea or independent travel. Both are definitely available to all students. Um, for field programs, there are going to be an additional cost associated with this, but don't, I don't, semester at sea is definitely not the cheapest way to do something, but it's the more convenient way to do it. So say you're in India and you want to see the Taj Mahal and just see all these things, we can put all these field programs together and then you can sign up and pay an additional cost for this. It kind of really makes it a little bit easier for students in those planning purposes um, when um, going to visit these larger countries. So something you can definitely take a look at on our website uh, and begin to plan and kind of think about what those costs associated with it would be. So kind of that budgeting. Um, as for independent travel, you are more than welcome to leave the ship, uh, go to different cities in that country. Uh, you are not allowed to cross country lines, just kind of keep that in mind, especially like for visa purposes. Um, but there's also the point where you don't have to go anywhere. The ship is open to you 24-7. So if you go to, let's see, Kobe, Japan, and you just want to get off the ship and explore Kobe, and then you're like, well, I don't really feel like going out to lunch or anything like that. You can come back to the ship, have some lunch, and then go back out. And you can come back at 1, 2, 12 at, at night, and the ship will still be open. So you, will, you have a place to sleep if you don't want to get, um, you know, Airbnbs or hotels or anything like that. So, and there's no curfews for the ship, so just keep that in mind as well. Kind of about the shipboard life. Um, so for our shipboard life, uh, a lot of people think that our shipboard community is like the 13th port of um, the, the voyage because it is such a intense and amazing community for students. You get to bond with so many people, you get to meet so many people. Um, you ask sometimes alumni from semester and see what was their favorite country they visited and a lot of them will actually say that they can't make that decision but the shipboard community was their most favorite. Um, it's really awesome and exciting. Uh, so some things that you're kind of looking at right there is Neptune Day, Sea Olympics, uh, well, talent shows. I think the stargazing one is really awesome. So basically, the ship will be out in the middle of the ocean, and uh, they will actually turn off all the lights on the ship, on the outside lights. And you get to be on the decks and just look up and look out into the sky with no lights around you, and you see all these stars. Um, so it's pretty Awesome. And usually there's a teacher on there that has all this knowledge about um, the sky and, you know, can really actually give you more information, which is really awesome, too. Um, there's also uh, the opportunities to do student clubs and organization, sports clubs, uh, fitness clubs, um, a lot of those things. So that happens usually in the beginning of the voyage where you get to uh, set up clubs with either your friends or other students on the ship and kind of keep that going throughout the voyage. Another thing that's really great are interport lectures. So sometimes we'll get a student who is from Ghana, goes to school in Ghana, but then flies to South Africa and gets on the ship there and then sails with you all the way to Ghana and gives you 
it, uh, provides lectures about what it's like to live in Ghana, what, what, what are social life, what are work life, things like that. So you really get this full rounded picture. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Some program and fees information. So the fees will vary a little bit on the cabin type you choose. Um, that's kind of the one that really differentiates from the lowest to the most expensive. Our fees are usually anywhere from 27,000 to 33,000 for a semester. Um, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe students are allowed to use their financial aid and scholarship money towards their program cost. Correct, yep. Yeah, so that's a really great thing. You can go to City Abroad office to learn more about that and the financial aid office will be able to help you with those things as well. Um, and then kind of some other like funding options outside uh, what you currently get at school. So semester C, we have scholarships and grants you can apply for, uh, quite a few. Um, we match your Pell Grant, and then we also have payment plans that you can sign up for that do five to 10 months. The two girls that you're actually looking at on the screen, they started a company to help fund their semester at C program by selling the hand headbands they're wearing. Um, they actually made enough money for both of them to have full rides uh, for semester at C for each semester, and they had leftover money that they donated to a um, foundation that they believed in. So people get creative. There's definitely a lot of opportunities out there in um, funding your voyage. I think also that student assistant grant that is a $4,000 grant where you work two hours a day on the ship while it's at sea. And we hire usually around 30 to 35 student assistant grants. So that's also a great idea, uh, opportunity that can also be a resume booster too. So, And then kind of just going over our admission requirements. So you just need to go to our uh, website, semesterc.org, and submit an online application. Uh, you can submit a student essay that is optional, and then we'll need your unofficial transcript. If you are below our required 2.5 GPA, uh, there will be some additional documents that you can submit uh, to be reviewed, and you just can't be on any kind of disciplinary probation at time of embarkation. Uh, I can let Sarah kind of talk to maybe the application mission requirements on UA side. Um, but yeah, kind of that in a nutshell. I know that was really, really quick, but I know we wanted to leave time for students to ask questions. Um, so please, I don't know, Sarah, if you want to talk about the UA side for applications at all or? Yeah, so um, any application, if you're planning on applying at Semester at Sea at all, you would go onto our website, um, studyabroad.ua.edu, go into the program search, type in um, semester at C, and then click search. You'll find the application right there and you can go ahead and apply now um, on our website. Um, well, since they're not having a spring voyage this year, the next application will be open for fall. Fall isn't quite open yet. Um, it should be open within the next month or so. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can feel free to shoot me or any of the Education Abroad Advisors an email. Um, So we have a question, sorry. I um, have applied for the spring 2022 voyage and have been both approved through SAS and UA endorsed. What are the next steps and when can I begin to apply for the student assistant position? So that's a question for you, Brittany. Yeah, absolutely, that's a great question. Um, so our scholarship window for the spring 22 voyage uh, will open up in July of 2021 and then we'll close in September. So you, there is gonna be a little little bit of wait there, but um, you know, keep an eye out. We'll send out emails letting you know that the scholarship portal is open. The two, schol the two grants that we do on a rolling basis are gonna be need-based and merit-based. So you can apply for those. Um, but the major kind of student assistant grants and the other like alumni scholarship, that is gonna be between that window, um, early July to I wanna say middle September. All right, our next question is, could you repeat the admission cost? Also, how much would admission be with financial aid? And I'll go ahead and answer that second part. Um, financial aid is gonna vary from student to student. So you will wanna work with the financial aid office um, to see how much financial aid you will be receiving for semester at sea, you can email them at financialaid at ua.edu 
and you can also complete a budget sheet with our office to get a more clear understanding of the amount for SAS and work with our office and the financial aid office to determine the specific amount that they'll be giving you. All right. And then for um, us, the admission or the program cost is going to be anywhere from 27000 to 33000 a semester. Um, that includes your tuition, your housing, your meals, insurance, um, on-site staff report, support, um, support from ISE in the advising process. Um, I feel like I'm missing another one, sorry. And then I know email address, but there could be one more. Uh, if you go to our website and you go to the cost page, you'll see where everything is listed. Um, but I think Sarah, there's a second part to her question that you probably would want to answer. Okay, I'm a senior in high school right now and I was wondering if it was possible to attend right after high school or do I need to be attending a university beforehand? So, McKenna, were you planning on going to University of Alabama after high school? I don't know if you could write that really quickly. <laughs> well, if you wanted to, if you weren't planning on going to University of Alabama right after high school, you can definitely apply as a gap year student. Um, that would be a little bit different of a process uh, since you wouldn't be enrolled in a university. Um, so, but Sarah, how many semesters do you need to be at Alabama before you can study abroad? Typically, we require one semester at UA before you can study abroad. Okay, perfect. That's the same with us. Like you need to have at least have one semester done at the secondary level uh, before mm -hmm. you can apply as an undergraduate. Yeah. And so that's also an option as well. So um, if you're receiving a scholarship or you're planning on using any of your financial aid, um, you can't really do that as a gap year student, so you'd have to do that as an enrolled UA student. Um, so we would encourage you to kind of wait until at least one term after you started here at UA. The next question is, does it cost extra to participate in activities within each country? If so, how much extra in addition to the tuition costs would it be? So it depends. It, um, so for our field programs, we have day field programs, we have half day field programs, we have overnight field programs. Um, so it can actually cost anywhere from $20 to $3,000, um, depending on what you want to do. Like I said, a four day overnight trip to the Taj Mahal, um, a four day overnight trip to the Great Wall of China, those are going to be more on your $2,500 to $3,000. Um, a half day program exploring the coffee creation in Costa Rica, something like that is going to be more on the $50 side. So, you know, it's really a, a big range. Um, if you go to our website under the field programs tab, you can kind of see what's been in the past. Um, but as for things moving forward, they do begin to kind of trickle in there around like six months, I want to say, prior to avoid, maybe eight. Um, so kind of in that, at least that year of when the voyage is. Definitely. I did some $20 programs that were like volunteer based mm -hmm. when I did semester at sea. <laughs> um, okay. The next question is, if you receive VA education benefits, can that transfer over into the semester at sea tuition or housing? So that is actually going to be a specific question for your VA office here on campus. Um, they're having a session today though. I believe it's at, um, let me check the time. It is at 5.30. So you're welcome to hop in there um, and ask any questions you might have about that specific um, program and how that relates to semester at sea. It varies from benefit to benefit. Just yes, very much. <laughs> no other no questions. And y'all are welcome to unmute yourself and ask any questions you might yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you say that you did semester at sea? I did. <laughs> and awesome. Fall 2015 alumni. <laughs> Great. Wait, I have a question too. Sorry. Go for so it. If like UA 
gives me like scholarship money, but like I'm not attending a semester like on campus. So would all of that go towards this? It depends. Um, are, so what kind of scholarship? <laughs> it's, um, it's, this, um, it's like an academic scholarship. So like a presidential or national merit? Yeah. Okay, so if you were trying to use that towards semester at C, you would get the same amount of tuition money as long as you are full-time enrolled in semester at C, which you would be, um, that you would receive for a normal term. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Which can be anywhere, if you're in-state, around $5,000, dollars to $5,000, and if you're out-of-state, anywhere from thirteen to $15,000. All right, next question. When do I begin to submit all of the documents and visas to the UA City Abroad Office for the spring 2022 voyage? <laughs> well, you definitely have some time. Um, we probably wouldn't end up processing those um, when it comes to the documentation um, for spring 2022 until fall 2021 or even maybe spring 2021 is when we open it. We typically open them around the March before, so about a year in advance. Um, so probably keep an eye out next spring for when we open that application. We are going to probably require you to recomplete um, the documentation because our app does change from year to year with the wording. Sometimes we can transfer it over a semester, but sometimes we can't. So you'll want to talk with your education abroad advisor about that specifically. Um, when it comes to visas, though, Semester at C does work with you to obtain visas. Yeah, so for us, um, we'll start emailing students probably about six months prior to embarkation uh, with information on starting to get the visa process started, um, as well as like in our medical forms and things like that. Because uh, the thing with visas, we don't want them to expire before you get there. Uh, so we know that we know the certain timelines and things like that. So just be a little patient uh, as we get everything ready and, you know, kind of let you know, okay, it's okay to now start applying for visas. And we work with a company called True Visa to help you with your, with all of your visas because we know it can get a little complicated. And what's great about True Visa is they know the order of which countries to apply for visas first in order for your, your passport not to be delayed or anything like that. So um, there's an additional fee for that, but I think it saves probably like 60 bucks. We get a really good discount and then you just have to pay for your visas on top of that. Awesome. So the next question is, what's roughly the cost of the application process? So for UA side, you have no application cost until you commit to a program. And then for an affiliate program, it's around $300, $350 to cover you for insurance and course enrollment, which is pretty low for most program fees within the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then for our application, it is a $75 application fee. And then after you've been accepted to the program, you're going to be making that $1,000 cabin deposit, which is refundable up to three or up to 90 days prior to your embarkation date. Do you have any more questions? We also have a very large alumni network here at the University of Alabama for semester at C specifically, myself included. Um, and so, if you want to get in contact with any of our alumni or um, talk to them about their experiences, they're more than happy to do that. Last year we hosted um, two different in-person events that were like pizza and talking about previous experiences with new applicants. Um, and we had more alumni show up than new applicants. So they're very eager to talk to you about their experiences. Um, so if we want, if you're interested in wanting to host a virtual version of that, reach out to myself or Brittany and we'd be more than happy to help coordinate that. Absolutely, yeah. We just relaunched our alumni program, our Global Ambassadors program, and I think the majority of the applications that I've received so far in my territory have been from Alabama. <laughs> so, definitely a huge presence, presence there. Do you have to attend UA to attend SAS, or can you attend from a different university? You can definitely attend from a different university. It really comes down to kind of what the university's um, process and approvals are. Um, so if you want to, you can definitely reach out to me via email if you plan on um, attend a different school, and I can kind of help guide you through that, or I can get you in contact with another regional director who works 
in um, that uh, works with that specific university. So yeah, it really comes down to specifics on the university um, that you're going to be at. I will say just as a plug for you, Edna, um, is that if you are receiving a UA scholarship, we are one of the few universities who does allow our students to use their UA scholarships to like all of our study abroad programs. So. <laughs> Any other questions, y'all? If you want to go back to the scholarships page, I can break down some of those too. We can talk about those or we can talk about in-country programming. Any kind of questions y'all might have? Um, how about, I'll say, I'll ask you a question. Okay. Uh, how does the course approval process work for UA? Yeah, so if you go, um, Actually, I'll go ahead and share my screen and just take, y'all can take a look. I can stop sharing mine. Perfect. Here we go. pull this up. So this is our website, studyabroad.ua.edu. And if you scroll down to this yellow article right here, this is an article about our course equivalency database. It is a public database, and this is how you would access it publicly. Um, read the article when you have time and there's a video to watch, but I'm going to go ahead and click through. Um, if you're interested in finding semester at C specific courses, um, you just have to type in semester at C search. Um, it's going to pull up 154 courses that have previously been evaluated at semester at C. One thing you will want to note is the study abroad course code. So if I sort it by study abroad course code, this is the course code that semester at C calls the class. So that term that you went abroad, which they do change from semester to semester sometimes, so you will want to check the course codes no matter where you apply to, but the study abroad course code um, and the name of the course will need to match in the system. If it doesn't, you can always submit a new course for evaluation. But then over here in this column, you can find out what the UA course is called. Um, so if you know that you need to take a humanities course at Anthropology 102, which is a pretty popular course on semester at sea, um, is available, a cultural anthropology course um, that can count as a humanities. Um, and you already know that if it says Ant 100 at, with semester at sea, it's going to come back as Anthropology 102. So that's how you find those. Some of their global studies courses, they come back as CIP 200. Um, and if you're interested, and maybe you have, you're a first year student and haven't picked out a minor yet, semester at C makes it where a lot of students get an accidental minor, um, just because the courses that you're taking are normally very globally focused. Um, and that CIP 200 course that I pointed out a second ago is focused on intercultural communication um, and understanding a little more global context. And so um, there is a minor that is focused around that. They will be presenting on that minor today at four o'clock. So if you want to jump in the critical foreign language scholarships, Born and Fulbright, they'll also be talking about um, the cultural understanding minor, I think is what it's called. I'll have to double check the wording on that. Um, how will we know which classes to take that will fulfill the SAS requirements and the UA requirements for our major and minor? So looking up the course of currency database um, and then working with your academic advisor. And we have about one minute remaining. So any final questions and we'll wrap this up. All right, well, we thank you, Brittany, for presenting today. We appreciate all of you for coming. Um, again, this will be posted online if you missed something or you need to catch up on what was said. Yeah, awesome. It was great seeing y'all and seeing y'all answer your questions. And I look forward to working with you guys soon in the future for students who haven't applied yet. So like I said, my email's in that chat box. Uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time. But thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>